This year has seen tremendous growth in the tech sector due to AI and the impact it has already had in our daily lives. Whether we see it firsthand or not, it is more prevalent in our digital footprints. But when you look at large companies like NVIDIA, they're already up 226% this year with a price to earnings ratio at a staggering 242X, which is why ARK Innovations has exited some of their position in NVIDIA and placed more of their investments into small cap companies with extreme potential for growth in both the short term and the long term. And as a reminder, small cap companies are high risk, high reward with massive fluctuations at the micro level. But if you plan to invest for the long term like me, then I think that you're gonna find value in the top four stock that I'm investing in and reviewing today. I'll jump right in with discussing UiPath, which is an enterprise grade software company that has been around for 18 years with a focus on automating systems and processes for its clients. Today, they've pivoted slightly where they are focusing on the integration of artificial intelligence to create a singular platform with everything integrated, governed, and managed from just one place. And they do this by connecting systems, processes, and teams into a streamlined and digital format that is more cost-effective way of operating. From a tactical standpoint, they utilize AI to process documents, mine customer interactions, and utilize generative AI all within a proven and secure platform. And this enterprise software is useful to any industry because so long as a business has tasks and processes, then there are areas to observe, track, and mine within the UiPath ecosystem to come up with process improvements. One of the first areas that a company can leverage UiPath with is within continuous discovery, which is a necessary evil to determine point of failure or inefficiencies. This all begins with the discover phase, where they extract and feed all forms of company data into the UiPath system to digest and map. From there, they move to understand the data with visualizing processes and analyzing the bottlenecks via AI. From there, the system can help the company to take action, where the team and the system work to re-engineer processes combined with automation. Once the cycle is completed, then you monitor the process continuously, and adjustments are made as the environment changes. Overall, this is the heart and the soul of what UiPath's AI system, bolted onto a company's enterprise, can provide. Having been an executive in the corporate world, I can attest that most every company has multiple programs, databases, and systems that don't all interact together. There are dedicated teams with specific access and knowledge on those systems, and getting information that spans across multiple functional groups can take days, where a system like UiPath can change that access and processes to mere minutes. As of today, UiPath is trading at $15.45, and it's up 25.7% year to date. To be competitive, every company will need to embrace AI in some form. For that reason, companies like UiPath are going to be backlogged for the next decade, especially since it's estimated that AI companies will be worth an estimated 15 trillion globally by 2030. The next company that has my eye, along with most major investors, is Archer Aviation, which is on the forefront of designing the next form of transportation called eVTOLs, or Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft. Especially since it's estimated that the eVTOL market will be worth 97 billion by 2030, with an annual growth rate of 11% each year. This is merely an estimate that I found on the internet, but I believe that that is severely underestimated because there is a lot of interest in them at the consumer level, the commercial level, and also from the military. As for Archer, their eVTOL is named Midnight and it has a range of 100 miles with a top speed of 150 miles per hour. They already have a strong goal of launching 6,000 aircraft by 2030 and their first customer was United Airlines with a purchase of 100 eVTOL. To help get Archer off the ground with their manufacturing, they've partnered with a company called Stellantis, which is an automaker with brands like Jeep, Chrysler, and Dodge, where they're already in the works to have a production facility in Georgia to build the Midnight Aircraft. And another key partnership has been with the Department of Defense, which recently paid off when Archer was awarded a $142 million contract with the US Air Force. And the contract is written where other branches of government can piggyback onto this contract and place additional projects into place, which could greatly increase the value of this contract for Archer. In addition, they recently received the FAA green light for special airworthiness that allows them to initiate flight test operations. This sets them up to transition to four credit testing of piloted midnight aircraft by 2024. The possibilities for eVTOL are unbound at this point. Yes, they'll obviously make a major impact in urban air mobility, which will ferry passengers within major cities to nearby airports and other major points of interest. 
but they can also be used as a vessel for delivering product and resources to remote areas. Or they can become safe and quiet forms of emergency life lights. And it seems like an obvious choice for tourism in remote locations with views that once only the rich could afford. As of today, Archer is trading at $7.34 and it's up 280.3% year to date. It's true that eVTOLs will seem like a novelty at first, but with the backing and support of most every airline behind them, they'll become mainstream overnight because of their carbon footprint being so clean. And I expect the cost and safety to be a huge improvement over helicopters. If anything, I dare say that commercial helicopters will become nearly extinct within 15 years. But we are several years out from that happening. Instead, our economy at the macro level is in a bit of a holding pattern. And Jerome Powell says that inflation is still too high and that more rate hikes could be coming. And for now, we're quote, proceeding carefully. So we don't know for sure. And worst of all, we don't know when to expect the next shoe to drop. But my subscribers have found an asset that could potentially perform regardless. It's museum grade fine art, an asset that 95% of the ultra rich allocate at least 5% of their portfolio to. And you can add that extra layer of diversification to your assets with today's sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks offering performance has remained impressive through COVID, inflation, interest rate hikes, and more. 15 sales thus far, with all 15 returning a profit to their investors. And just weeks ago, they sold a Cecily Brown piece for a 77% annualized return. On the heels of launching their largest offering to date, a $36 million Basquiat piece. Over 800,000 people have joined the platform, and shares have sold out within hours. Some of you won't want to miss out, so feel free to skip the waitlist and start collecting today. Just follow the link in the description below to Masterworks. The next company I'll be speaking to is ASML Holdings, which was established in 1984 and has amassed nearly four decades of experience in delivering groundbreaking solutions to the semiconductor manufacturing landscape. Headquartered in Veldhoven, Netherlands, the company has expanded its reach to become a global force, with subsidiaries and research facilities spread across Asia, Europe, and the Americas. The company specializes in producing photolithography machines that are essential for creating intricate patterns on silicon wafers, which is a crucial step in semiconductor manufacturing. As chip technology advances at a rapid pace, the need for ever smaller and more precise features on semiconductor components has become paramount. This is where ASML's expertise comes into play. In recent years, ASML's growth prospects have been notably bolstered by the surge in artificial intelligence and edge computing technologies. As AI applications permeate various industries, the demand for high-performance chips has skyrocketed. Because AI-driven tasks require exceptional computing power, necessitating advanced semiconductor components that can keep pace with the AI revolution. ASML, as a provider of lithography systems, plays a pivotal role in enabling chip manufacturers to produce the intricate and powerful chips required for AI applications. Moreover, the rise of edge computing has further underscored the importance of semiconductor miniaturization and efficiency. Edge computing involves processing data closer to its source, like your cell phone or a self-driving car, reducing latency and enhancing real-time processing capabilities. This paradigm shift requires semiconductor chips that are not only powerful, but also energy efficient, which aligns perfectly with ASML's expertise in producing advanced lithography systems capable of manufacturing such chips. And one of ASML's largest customers is Taiwan Semiconductor, which is currently building new facilities in Arizona and also in Japan, where they're taking up a lion's share of capacity from ASML. As of today, the ASML stock is trading at $679.62, and it's up 23.5% year to date. And with ASML being one of the few companies with a technology that chip makers rely on, there is nothing but upside. And keep in mind that the surge in AI requires more sophisticated chips, along with cars and eVTOLs that are becoming automated with the reliance on edge computing, where all these areas need a higher volume of innovative chips. Put that all together, and I believe that ASML Holdings is a sleeping giant that I'm watching closely. The next company is Palantir, which is an innovator in the realm of data analytics and artificial intelligence, where they've emerged as a transformative force behind the AI push especially since they've been around for 20 years where they've been fine tuning their system and their business model. They were founded in Silicon Valley by a group of visionary entrepreneurs. Palantir set out to tackle some of the world's most intricate data problems. 
Named after the all-seeing stones from J.R.R. Tolkien's literary universe, the company's mission is to equip decision makers with the tools to see patterns, connections, and insights within vast and often convoluted data sets. Where today Palantir's platform empowers organizations to harness this wealth of data, transforming it into actionable insights that drive strategic decision making and innovation. In fact, Palantir's AI-driven solutions enable organizations to delve deep into their data, uncovering hidden patterns and correlations that would otherwise be imperceptible. By leveraging AI algorithms, Palantir enables its customers to make predictive decisions, optimize operations, and enhance customer experiences in ways that were previously unattainable. Unlike other AI platforms, Palantir prides itself in leveraging AI in assisted decision-making where the platform recommends the next steps in the process to streamline decision-making and information gathering and sharing. Palantir offers four key platforms, which are AIP to activate and control AI on a private network. Next is Foundry, which is an entire operating system for an enterprise. Next is Gotham, that is an operating system at the global level to enhance decision making. And lastly is Apollo, that is an operating system for continuous delivery. In layman's terms, Palantir takes a company's different systems that don't talk to one another, and they allow the system to sit on top of all of them where it can observe and access everything so that it makes all the information available across all the different silos. This allows for immediate improvements in processes, analysis, and enhanced decision-making. Palantir systems boast that they can help find the golden needle within the proverbial haystack within minutes versus years, which has the potential to improve the efficiencies of any company. As of today, Palantir stock is at $15.15 .15, and it's up 137.1% year to date. And like many of the stock that I've already spoken to today, Palantir has a relatively small market cap because the demand is still in its infancy where I expect them to be a common household name within 10 years. But for many of you out there, individual stock can be a little bit scary. And hey, I get it. For that reason, I made a few different videos on the top ETF that may take away some of your concern and provide you with a bit more of a diverse set of investments. 